I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing hymn number 179 in the blue. Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in New Milford, Connecticut, as we gather for worship on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. We are so blessed that you all have joined us. Everything that you need to participate is in your bulletin, the blue hymnal that you just put down, and an open heart and eyes to look for the unexpected. And if you were paying attention 
I swear I saw Jesus wink when we sung that song. So I invite you to join in the opening sentences. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the dead of death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged well wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Please join me in praying Psalm 118 responsively by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now proclaim The Lord is my strength and my song. There is a sound of exaltation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, 
but live. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, that I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But for the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God, that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing and or dancing to the hymn 180. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
early first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they had laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have taken him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but She did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the God who is love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. (laughs) Alleluia, Christ is risen. Do you ever get tired of me saying to you, inviting you to say, say it like you mean it? Just think how we would live our days differently if we completely surrendered ourselves to the joy and power of God's love as demonstrated 
on this day. Life is a gift, and death, as we think of it, is not the final answer. Christ is risen. Can you imagine what our lives would be like if we really understood what those words mean? And yet, how can we even begin to understand the peace that surpasses all understanding? What can we believe without also needing, expecting to understand? We come together this Easter morning already knowing the gospel story. And perhaps you expect me to parse some part of it, rehearsing what we have heard many times before. Yes, no matter which of the four Gospels we read, we always begin early in the morning while it was still dark. And yes, one or more of the women are the first to discover that the tomb is empty. And no, they tend not to get the credit they deserve because, well, they were women. Don't get me started. The quick reaction in all the Gospels is always grief and terror, confusion and disbelief, amazement and uncertainty, all wrapped up in our very shared human inclination to see only what we expect to see and to hear only what we expect to hear. The only reason the Gospel of John's version is a bit more expanded than the others is because it was written some 60, 70, 80 years after, giving early followers time to process, time to try to make sense out of something that made no sense at all. And you know what? They did that in community, rereading scriptures, retelling stories, reimagining what life was becoming with Jesus still very much in their midst, surrendering their preconceived expectations of life and death, giving it to something totally out of their control. And in doing so, they began to look at each other differently. They began to live life differently. How might your life change if you could simply believe that you are created and loved by the one who can turn death into life. Have you ever asked God that question? I want to share a short story, a somewhat tongue-in-cheek conversation with God, originally crafted by modern-day writer by the name of John Rodell, with a few of my own adaptations added. And I invite us to think about our own prayer conversations and how God's sometimes confusing responses can change our expectations so that we come to know that this life is a journey simply to learn what love looks like goes like this. Hey, God. Hello, my love. The world is completely out of control. I know. It's an adventure, right? No. It's like being on a runaway train. 
We are out of control. I need to get my act together and so does everybody else. You want to be in control? Yes. You are living on a spinning wet rock of a planet that resides next to a constantly exploding fireball in the middle of an ever-expanding universe that is filled with mysteries beyond your wildest imagination. Um, okay. And on this planet in which you are hurtling through that great expanse, you are coexisting with billions of other people who all have free will and their own experiences that shape their perspectives and beliefs. Yeah. And while all this is going on, your eternal soul, the full essence of who you are, is temporarily residing in a physical body that is such a miracle of delicate engineering, and yet at any given moment could produce its last heartbeat. Right? What is it about your life over which you actually have any control? Um, come on, you know the answer to this. With all the love I have given you to live in this life, what can you control? How kind I am to people? Yep. And one other thing. What's that? How kind you are to yourself. Aside from that, most everything else is a bit outside of your design. This is a bit terrifying, God. All great love stories are. We come to church often expecting a lot of thou shouts and thou shalt nots. When all Jesus shows us is what love looks like. Living Christ's resurrected life requires a deep willingness to accept how little of our life is actually within our own control, other than to look for the very image of God within ourselves and within each other. Faith is simply an acceptance that we live in God's world, that we are God's created beings, and that God is at work in and through us according to God's sheer love for all of us. And all of that for our benefit. You know what this means? It means that we are not alone. It means that we are given a community of faith who is learning how to expect the power and presence of Christ's reconciling love in every aspect of our lives in everything that is happening in our families, in our community, and in the world. We are learning to care for one another as we ask with God's help not to let hopelessness or sadness or despair cloud the new life that Christ's victory over death tells us that we can find even in the darkest places. And then we are learning to do that with which we do have control. Loving our neighbors as though they are ourselves. 
because we are one body, one spirit in Christ, showing the world that Christ lives. That is why we shout with meaning in the belief that alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. It takes a lifetime to process what the resurrected Christ means for us. But in this space and in this time, we do have each other. And we have our baptism into this way of life. And so we continue the conversation as we turn to our bulletins and stand as we are able. Dear friends, through the mystery of the Easter resurrection, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death to worldly ways and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observances are ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced the works of sin and promised to serve God faithfully as God's holy people in God's holy church. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? You believe in God the Holy Spirit. So here are the things over which we do have control with God's help. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us then join our voices together in prayer gratitude and hope for the steadfast love of God that breathes new life through this body of Christ. Thank you, Donna.
prayers of the people. Christ has burst through the tomb of death, victorious over its power, revealing the triumph of light over every darkness. In awe and wonder, we offer our prayers, responding, hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the resurrection of Jesus, who empties our spiritual tombs and reveals the way to abundant life, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For our larger church, remembering especially Hosam, the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff and Laura, our bishops, Lisa, our priest, our vestry and lay leaders, and all who join us for worship, that we may embrace the mystery of Easter and give witness to the living Christ in our midst. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For our government leaders, especially Joe, our president, Ned, our governor, Pete, our mayor of New Milford, and members of our Congress and courts, that they may guide us with God's integrity toward a greater fulfillment of the quest for healing and reconciling freedom, justice, and peace. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For our sisters and brothers in the Ukraine, in Israel and Palestine, in Afghanistan and all of the innocent in troubled places, wherever strife stifles harmony, that the actions of the global community may free all who are suffering, persecuted, or imprisoned unjustly. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For the ministries of this parish, including our efforts through the Literacy Volunteers on the Green, New Milford Social Services, especially the Food Bank, the Senior Center, and the Youth Agency, New Milford Refugee Resettlement and Washington Refugee Resettlement Project, as we celebrate the two-year anniversary of our Afghan family's arrival. Tall Paul's Closet, repurposed for the children of our community. Our Sunday school and youth group, our adult Bible study, our lay preachers and worship assistants, and our choir with expanded opportunities for all who seek to make a joyful noise to the Lord that we may continue to fully engage in the invitations to walk in love with our neighbors. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For the healing of parishioners, for Katie, Carolyn, Peter, Arthur, Anna, Jean, Joy, Joan J., Josie, and Sanuk. And for family and friends, Nancy, Nick, Billy, Bishop Michael Curry, Janet, Mark, Linda, Carrie, Dennis, Douglas, Kevin, Rich, Holly, Matt, Artie and Dorothy. For all who have felt separated from the church and are seeking a way to come back home and for newcomers seeking a welcoming faith community. For family caregivers, parents, and all who walk in above and beyond love for family members, that they may know the strength of God's blessings. And for all first responders and peace builders whose expressions of true sacrificial love for strangers motivate us to offer the same. Please add your own prayer requests, silently or aloud, for Marion. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O risen Christ. For our parish life together, 
that we may continue to walk forward together in faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O risen Christ. For parishioner Hel Helen Gardner, who died this week, and in thanksgiving for all the faithful departed, those who have left us an inheritance of God's blessings and who now join in the chorus of angels and saints in paradise. Remembering also all in whose names the Easter flowers have been offered. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. We offer these prayers in thanksgiving for all who gather in churches across the world to share in Christ's Holy Eucharist on this most sacred day so that we may each be changed by the message of new life and grow richly and fully into the healing and reconciling love of Jesus. Grant us the continued gift of your spirit that we may know the risen Christ and make him known. And through him at all times and in all places, seek to grow into his likeness as we grow into the body of Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And may the peace of the Lord always be with you. Please look into the eyes of your neighbors and share that hope with them. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Okay, now I think I just see Jesus grinning from ear to ear. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Our worship continues with the great thanksgiving. Which you can find in your bulletin, I invite you to engage, participate, and find yourself in the midst of the holy. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are unceasingly at work from chaos, bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hem of your unending glory. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all. For by the cross, eternal life is ours and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place, forever, making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the spirit who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walk free. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. 
made one with him, we offer you these gifts and with them ourselves, a single holy living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. gifts of God for the beloved people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Just a reminder and a notice for those who are visiting us, um, we still are receiving both wine and bread. However, we are only in tincting or dipping um, our wafer into the wine rather than directly drinking from the cup. We are still a work in progress as we make our way through um, ways to keep each other healthy.
So sometimes in the Episcopal Church, we are very happy when hymns have a whole lot of verses and the choir sings them all. <laughs> Returning to your bulletin with post-communion prayer, let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do we have any announcements? I think we've been doing a whole lot of work getting up to this day. This week will be a week of rest. However, I do know that we have a newsletter coming out the end of this week. Um, if you are not already on our newsletter list and would like to be, please, um, there are various cards around or talk with Ron. You can give us your email address. Um, because you know what? Life is happening here. And we would love to have you come be part of it. Yep, it's not a week of rest for our uh, food collection volunteers. Uh, we'll be out there again on Wednesday morning for our first collection of uh, April. Uh, it'll be from t 10 to noon, and if you have non-perishable food items you'd like to drop off, that'd be great. Um, there is a chance of s some heavy rain, and we might have to pull the plug at the last minute. We'll put it out on the, on the Connects uh, email. Uh, if not, hope to see you there. Uh, some of the newer folks, uh, just to give you an idea what we do. Uh, twice a month we collect food. Uh, it started out as uh, part of the pandemic. We had a drive-by food drop-off, and uh, we found that long after the pandemic, uh, the, the food banks have uh, asked us to complete continue uh, with that because they really appreciate what we're doing. So if you can drop something off between 10 and noon on Wednesday, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sue Danino. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Tuesday, April 2nd, is Ladies' Night Out at Vegas, down on Railroad Street at 6 o'clock. If you want to go, you can see me after church, or Mary Vallow, who's in the back. Um, or if you get our email thing, you can uh, contact us through our email contacts. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Altimus. Um, so today is our annual uh, Easter egg hunt for the kids. Uh, I wanted to mention um, after the dismissal hymn, we're going to all the kids, if they could go out to the front of the church, we have baskets. Everyone could take a basket. Um, the plan is um, ages zero to four are going to go to the Meditation Memorial Garden um, and have their Easter egg there, hunt there, and anyone else up to years, uh, 12 years old um, will be doing the front as well as a little bit of, of the side. Um, and then for the younger kids, I can lead them over to the, uh, the garden. So thank you. And I invite um, folks to um, at the end of the service to sort of hang a little bit here so our young ones can get out the front door. Um, take a little time to say hello to everybody. Um, if you see a face you do not know, 
um, going up and saying, hi, my name is, um, is a great way to have a brief conversation. Um, and am I correct in understanding, Emily, do we have some goodies out on the steps? Where is Emily? Goodies out on the steps? Um, for before you go, just to have, I know everybody's got family plans and their own running around for this day, but I want you to give one moment to take some time with this incredible group of people you are sitting with and just say hi. Um, also, a reminder, parents, um, with the Easter egg hunt, hopefully we can get everybody gathered back on the steps with their baskets so we can get a picture, because you know if we don't have a picture, then it didn't really happen. With that said, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, your minds, in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing or dancing with me down the aisle, the hymn 207. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.